Jonathan Kadish from Aquaponics NYC. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build an easy tea siphon. This is a siphon for a media grow bed commonly used in aquaponics. There are a lot of other siphons out there. There's a bell siphon, the U siphon, the loop siphon, but I think the easy tea siphon is just really simple. It's very quick to build and it's inexpensive. You could probably do all this for under 10 bucks. So let's go over the components that are sitting in front of me. So first we have some half inch pipe, just a few small pieces of that. Then we have a half inch T. This is slip to slip, but you could use threaded if you want. Then we have two half inch to three quarter inch T's. So there are two of those. Then we have these end plugs. There are two three quarter inch end plugs. And lastly, we have some three quarter inch pipe with caps on the end. And those caps have holes drilled in the end. So the next thing to do is to establish the level you would like the water to rise to in your grow bed. Typically in aquaponics, this is about an inch and a half to two inches below the top of the grow bed. This leaves a dry area at the top of the grow bed, which will keep algae and insects from becoming an issue. So as you can see, this grow bed had a bulkhead fitting in the back of the grow bed, which led to a loop siphon previously. So we're gonna retrofit this to our easy T siphon. You can see the old water line uh, represented by this mineral deposit. And that's about two inches below the top of the grow bed. So we've cut this piece, which is the standpipe. We've cut it just to go there. And when we put in the half inch T, that midpoint right here is the midpoint of the T. We'll attach these next two connector tubes. And then we'll attach the half inch to three quarter inch T's on either side. Next, we'll take our drain pipes and we'll fit on the caps on the end. And then we'll turn that T a little bit insert the drain pipe on the either side and drop them back down and you can see that this pipe has to be cut so that the bottom of your uh, of your cap here is at the bottom of the grow bed and then finally, these two caps go in the end here. And that's it, easy T siphon complete. So the siphon is complete, but we're not done yet. So when the siphon starts, the water level is right here at the midpoint of the T. Water starts just falling by force of gravity down the middle of the T and meets together like that and creates a suction force which starts the siphon. Now as the water level drops in the grow bed, the water being lifted in these two tubes gets heavier and heavier and you need a sufficient amount of suction force to make that uh, lift all the way down to the bottom of the grow bed to stop the siphon. So what I've discovered through trial and error, I don't know how to do anything else in this case. If you know the math on this, please supply it to us. Uh, put it in the comments down below and we'd all be curious to find out about the map. But through trial and error, I discovered that coming out of the back of the grow bed, um, you need a, a one inch drain. So that's what I've done here. So the one inch drain comes through the back of the grow bed through a bulkhead fitting that goes down a one inch tube to a one inch elbow and then some more one inch tube going all the way to the fish tank. 
So the amount of water inside of this tube creates enough force through the force of gravity to lift all the water inside of the grow bed and to actually have enough force to finish the siphon. If this is too small, uh, say if I was only using a half inch tube, it would not have enough force to actually stop the siphon and the siphon would just go on and on and on. So let's see this thing in action so you can see what I mean. So there's a seam that runs across all the pieces of plastic here. Um, this seam is from the injection molding. It's right at this water level where you see it now. And this is actually where the siphon begins to flow. So as the water level rises to that midpoint seam, the siphon begins. And as you can see, all the air is evacuated from the pipe. And that's a solid column of one inch water flow. So that'll drain pretty quick. So I have a theory about how the siphon breaks. As it drains, air enters the bottom of the feeder tube. This lessens the flow of water. And in the drain, that means that some air can get up inside of the one inch pipe and rise up the siphon. The combination of the two is what breaks the siphon. So you might have been looking at this design and wondering why are these caps here? Well, these caps serve two purposes. The first one is while the siphon is running, which it is right now, you can simply remove a cap. That introduces the air and stops the siphon. The second use for the caps is maintenance. You can get one of these Max Crafts grabbers, or there are many other brands out there. Just make sure it's long enough to get down the tube and you can grab any roots that are growing up into the feeder tubes. Also, if perhaps a pebble drops down to the bottom, you can grab that too. And one last tip, don't put your siphon in the middle of the grow bed where it's difficult to get access to it. Put it on the edge of the grow bed so that you can get in there and do your maintenance on a regular basis. So now it's time to put the media back in, get some fish, and grow some plants. This is Jonathan Kadish for our Aquaponics NYC, signing out.